Hi, my name is Stacy Thompson and I'm one of Dr. Gersten's nurses and I'm here today to talk to you about the T-lift procedure that he is recommending for you. So this is your lumbar spine and this is what it looks like from the front. You have five bones and the white represent the vertebrae, the bones, and the yellow represent the discs that are in between your bones. Dr. Gersten will make an incision in your back here. It's going to be about this big so that he can get in to do the work that he needs to do. And he's going to come in and he will take a piece of this disc. He's not going to remove the entire disc. He's only going to remove a portion of this disc. Now in its place he's going to use this cage. Um, this cage, I refer to it as a spacer because it maintains the space of the disc that is removed. This cage will then be placed in the space of the disc. And as you can see, this cage has, has a hole that goes from top to bottom. So when Dr. Gersten places this cage into the disc space, he will then take some of your own bone marrow and place it inside this hole. So to obtain this bone marrow, when you are asleep under general anesthesia, your hip comes off here. Dr. Gerson will take a needle, go into your hip bone, and it's, uh, extract some bone marrow. <clears throat> he will then place the bone marrow into this hole in the spacer. The spacer is then placed where the disc was, and that bone marrow, in time, the bone marrow will grow bone cells. The bone cells will grow into bone. And whenever bone touches bone, it grows. So that bone is going to touch the bone on the top, and it will touch the bone on the bottom. And this is going to grow into one solid piece of bone. So that is the fusion part of your surgery. The next part of your surgery is that we need to stabilize this area while this bony fusion is taking place. So what Dr. Gersten will do is he will put a screw through this portion of the bone that will go directly into this bone. And then another screw into this bone that goes through here. And then he drops a rod that is going to drop through the head of this screw straight down here. So you're going to have screw, 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 rod, rod. This will maintain the stability of this portion of your spine while this bony fusion is taking place here. Once this is solidly fused, you will no longer need the instrumentation. However, we're not going to open you up and take that instrumentation back out, so that will remain over time. Now, after the surgical procedure, um, some complications that you need to be aware of is that there is always a risk with any surgical procedure of infection. Our infection rate here is extremely low, so we rarely see, see this. The other risk of any spinal procedure is a risk of a dural tear. Now, what <laughs> happens with a dural tear is your spinal cord is here. It comes straight down and the lining around your spinal cord, it wraps completely around, is called the dura. That dura is very, very thin and it can tear very easily. However, Dr. Gerson will see that during the operation because he will see a leakage of spinal fluid. So during the procedure, he will sew that up and then he'll let you know about that postoperatively that that complication occurred. Other complications that we could possibly see, um, some potential bad complications, um, uh, profuse bleeding, um, paralysis, death, uh, these complications could happen. We rarely see them, so I'm required to mention them to you. Other complications that we see are possibly, you know, if you come into surgery with leg pain prior to, generally in the recovery room, your leg pain will be gone. But for some patients, you may have an increase in your leg pain. Or 
If you come in with leg pain on your right, you may now say to us, you have leg pain on the left. And these symptoms are because you have some swelling internally and it's pressing on your nerves. And once this swelling starts to decrease, those symptoms will start to decrease. So in time, those will go away. If you have numbness and tingling to your extremities, those symptoms can go away, but they take a longer period of time to go away. So we ask that you be patient with those symptoms. So I hope you have learned from this uh, presentation today. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks very much.